Welcome to Just Stories, we hope you enjoy the story. The Bitter Conflict, The War of the Oranges, by Just Stories. Chapter 1, Prelude to War, Tensions Rise Between Portugal and Spain. Welcome to the first chapter of The Bitter Conflict, The War of the Oranges. In this chapter, we will delve into the background of the conflict, examining the long-standing disagreements between Portugal and Spain and the events that led up to the outbreak of hostilities in 1801. The relationship between Portugal and Spain had always been fraught with tension. At the heart of the issue was the question of territory. Portugal had established a vast empire during the Age of Exploration, with colonies and trading posts in Africa, Asia, and the Americas. Spain, meanwhile, had its own global empire, with territories in South America and the Philippines, as well as a number of possessions in Europe, including the Netherlands. These two empires were often in conflict, as each sought to expand its influence and control over new territories. Portugal and Spain fought a number of wars over the centuries, including the War of the Spanish Succession in the early 18th century. Although the war ended with the Treaty of Utrecht, which recognized Portugal's independence and its right to the territories it had acquired, tensions remained high between the two countries. The situation was exacerbated by the fact that Portugal was a small, relatively weak country compared to Spain. Although it had a powerful navy and a number of well-fortified ports, it lacked the military might to match its larger neighbor. This made Portugal vulnerable to Spanish aggression, which was often motivated by a desire to acquire Portuguese territory or resources. In the late 18th century, tensions between Portugal and Spain began to rise once again. One major point of contention was the border between the two countries. Portugal claimed that its border was defined by the Treaty of Alcanizas, which had been signed in 1297. Spain, however, argued that the border had been incorrectly defined in the treaty and that it was entitled to certain territories that were currently under Portuguese control. Another major issue was trade. Portugal was a major exporter of wine, olive oil, and other agricultural products, and it relied heavily on trade with other European countries to sustain its economy. Spain, however, was also a major agricultural producer, and it often sought to limit Portugal's trade with other countries in order to protect its own markets. These tensions came to a head in the late 1790s, when Spain began to increase its military presence along the border with Portugal. In response, Portugal bolstered its own defenses, and both countries began to mobilize their armies. The situation reached a critical point in 1801, when Spanish troops crossed the border into Portugal and began to seize key fortresses and towns. In the next chapter, we will examine the early stages of the war, including the Spanish invasion of Portugal and the siege of Almeida, a key fortress in the region. We will see how the Portuguese army, despite being outnumbered and outgunned, put up a heroic defense against the Spanish invaders. Join us as we continue our journey through the bitter conflict, the War of the Oranges. Chapter 2, The Siege of Almeida, A Devastating Blow to Portugal. Welcome to the second chapter of the bitter conflict, the War of the Oranges. In this chapter, we will examine the early stages of the war, including the Spanish invasion of Portugal and the siege of Almeida, a key fortress in the region. In the spring of 1801, Spanish troops crossed the border into Portugal, sparking the War of the Oranges. They quickly seized a number of key towns and fortresses, including Almeida, a strategically important fortress near the border. Almeida was a major obstacle for the Spanish forces, as it commanded an important road leading into Portugal, and its capture would enable the Spanish to advance further into the country. The Portuguese commander at Almeida, General Francisco de Paula Leite, knew that he faced a daunting task. His garrison was greatly outnumbered by the Spanish forces, and the fortress was in a state of disrepair. Nevertheless, he was determined to hold out as long as possible, and he ordered his men to prepare for a siege. The Spanish forces quickly encircled the fortress, cutting off all supply lines and communications. They then began a relentless bombardment of the fortress, using heavy artillery and mortars to rain down shells and grenades on the defenders. The Portuguese garrison responded with their own artillery, but they were greatly outmatched by the Spanish firepower. Despite the overwhelming odds against them, the Portuguese defenders of Almeida put up a fierce resistance. 
They dug trenches and built earthworks to protect themselves from the Spanish artillery, and they used their own artillery to target the Spanish positions. They also mounted sorties against the Spanish lines, attempting to disrupt their siege works and harass their troops. The siege lasted for over two weeks, with both sides suffering heavy losses. The Spanish troops were particularly hard hit by disease and poor conditions, as they were forced to camp outside the fortress without adequate shelter or provisions. Nevertheless, they continued to press the siege, determined to capture Almeida at any cost. In the end, the Portuguese defenders were unable to hold out any longer. On August 25, 1801, a massive explosion rocked the fortress as the Spanish artillery breached the walls and entered the fortress. The Portuguese garrison fought valiantly, but they were overwhelmed by the Spanish troops, who quickly seized control of the fortress. The fall of Almeida was a devastating blow to Portugal. The loss of the fortress opened up a major road into the heart of the country, and it made it much easier for the Spanish to advance further into Portuguese territory. The Portuguese army was demoralized by the loss, and it was clear that the war would be a long and difficult struggle. In the next chapter, we will examine the Battle of Vigo, a naval showdown between the Portuguese and Spanish fleets off the coast of Spain. We will see how the Portuguese Navy, despite being outnumbered and outgunned, put up a heroic defense against the Spanish invaders. Join us as we continue our journey through the bitter conflict, the War of the Oranges. Chapter 3, The Battle of Vigo, a Naval Showdown Welcome to the third chapter of the bitter conflict, the War of the Oranges. In this chapter, we will examine the Battle of Vigo, a naval showdown between the Portuguese and Spanish fleets off the coast of Spain. After the fall of Almeida, the Portuguese army was in disarray, and the Spanish forces continued their advance into Portuguese territory. However, the Portuguese navy was still a formidable force, and it was determined to defend its homeland against the Spanish invaders. The Spanish Navy, led by Admiral Francisco Melgarejo, had been tasked with blockading the Portuguese coast and preventing any foreign ships from entering Portuguese ports. However, the Portuguese Navy, under the command of Admiral Manuel de Brito, was determined to break the blockade and engage the Spanish fleet in battle. The two fleets met off the coast of Vigo, a Spanish port town, on October 3, 1801. The Spanish fleet consisted of 27 ships of the line, while the Portuguese had only 12 ships of the line and a number of smaller vessels. Despite being heavily outnumbered and outgunned, Admiral de Brito ordered his fleet to engage the Spanish, hoping to inflict enough damage to break the blockade. The battle was intense and lasted for several hours, with both sides suffering heavy losses. The Spanish fleet, with its superior numbers and firepower, initially had the advantage, and it seemed that the Portuguese fleet would be overwhelmed. However, the Portuguese ships were more maneuverable, and they were able to outflank the Spanish fleet, inflicting heavy damage on their ships. The turning point of the battle came when a Portuguese ship, the Principe Real, broke through the Spanish line and engaged Melgarejo's flagship, the Santissima Trinidad. The two ships engaged in a fierce battle, with the Principe Real eventually wreaking the Santissima Trinidad with a broadside and causing significant damage. Melgarejo was wounded, and his ship was forced to withdraw from the battle. With the Spanish flagship out of action, the Portuguese fleet was able to press its advantage, and the Spanish fleet began to withdraw. The battle was a decisive victory for the Portuguese Navy, which had managed to break the Spanish blockade and secure control of the seas off the Portuguese coast. The victory at Vigo was a major boost for Portuguese morale, and it helped to turn the tide of the war. It also demonstrated the skill and bravery of the Portuguese sailors, who had managed to hold their own against a much larger and more powerful enemy. However, the war was far from over, and both sides continued to fight fiercely for control of the region. In the next chapter, we will examine the Siege of Porto, a desperate stand by the Portuguese defenders against the Spanish invaders. Join us as we continue our journey through the bitter conflict, the War of the Oranges. Chapter 4, The Siege of Porto, a Desperate Stand Welcome to the fourth chapter of the bitter conflict, the War of the Oranges. In this chapter, we will examine the Siege of Porto, one of Portugal's largest cities, and the desperate stand by the Portuguese defenders against the Spanish invaders.
After their victory at Vigo, the Portuguese Navy was able to secure control of the seas off the Portuguese coast, and the Spanish forces were forced to rely on overland routes to advance into Portugal. The Spanish army, led by General Gabriel de Mendizabal, marched towards Porto, a major port city and economic hub. The Portuguese defenders knew that the Spanish would target Porto, and they worked to prepare the city for a siege. They fortified the walls and gates, dug trenches and built barricades, and prepared the city's defenders for a long and difficult struggle. The Spanish army arrived outside Porto in late October 1801 and began a fierce bombardment of the city. The Portuguese defenders responded with their own artillery, and a fierce battle ensued. The Spanish attempted to breach the city walls, but they were repelled by the Portuguese defenders, who fought with great bravery and determination. As the siege dragged on, conditions inside the city began to deteriorate. Food and water supplies were running low, and disease was spreading among the population. Nevertheless, the Portuguese defenders refused to give up, and they continued to fight with all their might to protect their city and their homeland. The turning point of the siege came in early December, when the Spanish army attempted to storm the city gates. The Portuguese defenders were ready for the attack, and they fought fiercely to repel the Spanish troops. The battle was intense and bloody, with both sides suffering heavy losses, but in the end, the Portuguese defenders emerged victorious. The Spanish army was forced to withdraw from Porto, and the siege was lifted. The Portuguese defenders had won a great victory, and they had managed to hold out against a much larger and more powerful enemy. However, the victory came at a great cost, with many lives lost and the city of Porto severely damaged. The siege of Porto was a pivotal moment in the War of the Oranges. The Portuguese defenders had demonstrated their bravery and determination, and they had shown that they would not give up their homeland without a fight. The Spanish, meanwhile, had suffered a significant setback, and it was clear that the war would continue to be a long and difficult struggle. In the next chapter, we will examine the Treaty of Badajoz, which ended the War of the Oranges and brought peace to the region. Join us as we continue our journey through the bitter conflict, the War of the Oranges. Chapter 5, The Treaty of Badajoz and Uneasy Peace Welcome to the fifth and final chapter of the bitter conflict, the War of the Oranges. In this chapter, we will examine the Treaty of Badajoz, which ended the war and brought peace to the region. After the Portuguese victory at Porto, the Spanish forces were forced to retreat back across the border, and the war entered a stalemate. Both sides suffered heavy losses, and it became clear that the conflict was unsustainable. Negotiations began between the two sides, with the goal of reaching a peaceful resolution to the conflict. The Treaty of Badajoz was signed on June 6, 1801, bringing an end to the war. The treaty was a complex document, with a number of provisions and clauses that addressed the various issues that had led to the conflict. One of the key provisions of the treaty was the establishment of a new border between Portugal and Spain. The border was defined by the Treaty of Alcanizas, with a few minor adjustments that were agreed upon by both sides. The new border was intended to settle the long-standing territorial disputes between the two countries, and it was hoped that it would prevent future conflicts from arising. The treaty also addressed the issue of trade between Portugal and Spain. The two countries agreed to maintain open trade between their territories and to respect each other's trading rights. This was a major victory for Portugal, which had been fighting to protect its economic interests against Spanish attempts to limit its trade with other countries. Another key provision of the treaty was the release of prisoners of war. Both sides had captured a large number of enemy soldiers during the war, and the treaty required that all prisoners be released and repatriated to their home countries. The Treaty of Badajoz was a significant achievement, as it brought an end to a long and bitter conflict between Portugal and Spain. However, the peace was an uneasy one, and the two countries remained wary of each other in the years that followed. The legacy of the War of the Oranges was a mixed one. On the one hand, it demonstrated the bravery and determination of the Portuguese people, who had fought fiercely to defend their homeland against a much larger and more powerful enemy. On the other hand, it highlighted the deep-seated tensions and animosities that existed between Portugal and Spain, and it made clear that the region was still a volatile and unstable one.
As we conclude our journey through the bitter conflict, the War of the Oranges, we hope that you have gained a greater appreciation for the complexities of this historical event. War is always a difficult and painful experience, and the War of the Oranges was no exception. However, it also revealed the resilience and strength of the human spirit, and it demonstrated that even in the darkest of times, there is always hope for peace and reconciliation. Thank you for watching our story. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. So you don't miss out on our next video.